You're on a ship when you notice some water foaming nearby. It looks as if a huge vessel just sunk there, but you don't see any debris. Steam is rising over the water, and large bubbles appear on the surface. In a couple of minutes, you see a small piece of land appear right in front of your eyes. It's releasing flames and lava. Millions of gallons of water evaporate in the mouth of the volcano. Frightened, you get away from this place. For the next three years, the small island covered with volcanoes will slowly be emerging from the water. Every day, it'll erupt and fill the sky with black ash. When the ash settles, it'll get mixed with the water and form the shore. This eruption lasted three years, and finally, by 1967, the island of Surtsey on the southern coast of Iceland was fully formed. Surtsey is one of the few islands that have emerged from the depths to the surface of the sea. But it's almost impossible to get here. The island has a unique ecological system, and scientists want to find out how it's going to develop without human influence. Only a few people from all over the world have permission to walk around on the island. For many decades, People's minds have been occupied with the mystery of Easter Island, a remote piece of volcanic soil far away in the Pacific Ocean. But our planet hosts thousands of such lonely islands. What is so peculiar about this one? The mystery is concealed not in the island itself, but giant stone statues covering it. Who created the world-famous huge stone heads? Did they serve any specific purpose? Rapa Nui, which is the name given to Easter Island by its first inhabitants, is the territory of Chile and is situated in the southern Pacific Ocean. And it is so far away that you can easily consider it one of the most distant places on the world map. The only transport that can take you there is a plane. If you want to get to this destination point, you will need to spend five hours on board flying from Santiago to Easter Island. The statues carry the name Moai. They started to be carved at some point between the 13th and 15th centuries. Rapa Nui statues are easily recognized thanks to their peculiar faces. They have long noses, wide chins, rectangular ears, heavy brows, and deeply set eyes. It is quite curious that the nostrils curl in the way fish hooks do. Firstly, people thought that the statues were made up only by their heads. But surprisingly, it turned out that there are full bodies that are attached to the heads. It was discovered during excavations in May 2012. The bodies were just hidden underground. Still, the heads of the statues, visible from the first site, make up three-eighths of each statue's size. As for the arms, they were carved against the bodies, resting in different positions. Most statues, 834 out of 887, were carved from the material called tuff, which is, in fact, compressed volcanic ash. Curiously, all the statues except one faced inland. It means their backs are turned to the ocean. Perhaps the reason for that was the belief that the statues were the protectors of the villagers. That's why they overlooked the settlement. The only statues not fitting into this pattern can be found at Ahu Akivi, a sacred place for the people of Rapa Nui. People keep wondering how the statues of such a huge weight have been distributed all around the island. What's more, in 1722, visitors found a small local population between 1,500 and 3,000 people. How could it correlate with the hundreds of statues on the island? The mystery surrounding the way Rapa Nui people could move the statues challenged the researchers not letting them back off. In the 1980s, some of them decided to recreate a statue and check the possibility of moving it around. Several decades passed and another group of American scientists proved that the islanders could tie ropes encircling the huge statues and move them with a walking motion. They backed up their theory with practice, moving a full-size replica using this method. Actually, their idea can explain why Rapa Nui folklore states that the statues were walking with the help of magic. It explains the way the statues were transported to their designated places. 
Our next stop is Brazil, far from the center of Sao Paulo. That's where you can find an island that's almost impossible to get to. But if you succeed, you're unlikely to leave it. It's called Snake Island. There's no other place on the planet with such a high concentration of snakes. They are the only owners of the island since no other animals can survive among them. The Golden Lancehead. They are one of the most venomous species in the world. Their venom is very powerful and fast-acting. If you let this reptile bite a raw piece of meat, the place around the bite will start to melt. Count me out. Imagine you're on this island and the snakes don't bite you. The most interesting thing you can find there is an old lighthouse. It's hidden in the dense foliage of trees. People lived on the island a long time ago. Rumor has it that the last keepers were in the lighthouse when the snakes broke in. No one has lived there ever since. How these unique snakes appeared on the island is still a mystery. The most popular legend claims that a pirate came there a long time ago. He hid a treasure somewhere on the island. Then, he left the snakes in the spot where the chest was hidden. The pirate hoped the reptiles would scare people away from his gold coins and jewelry. Since then, a few snakes have managed to increase their population thousands of times. And some of them, reportedly, are wearing jewelry. No, not really. Even if you wanted to get to the island for some reason, the patrol services would stop you. Only a few people in special protective suits can get there to conduct scientific research. Susie gets here on a small boat. As soon as she steps on the ground, she turns on the live broadcast on her phone. She records dolls hanging on trees all over the island. They have different clothes, different sizes, and faces. There are about a dozen creepy toys on every tree. Rain and hot sun deform the toys' faces. They are covered with moss and greenery and have taken eerily scary forms. There are rumors they come to life at night. Wanna check? One of the subscribers writes, No problem, Susie agrees. The sun is going down below the horizon. Darkness falls on the forest. Susie is wandering among the trees. The moon lights her way. She makes a fire to get warm. At this moment, she hears a strange sound. She notices some movement out of the corner of her eye. The phone turns off. Susie looks up and sees one of the dolls, lit up by the flames, is turning its head in her direction. Susie screams and runs away from this place. Of course, the doll didn't move. You can notice a little bird sitting behind the toy's head. A few days later, Susie found out that one of the Mexico City locals had moved to the island in the 50s and filled it with toys. He collected dolls from landfills and canals around the island. He spent several days decorating every tree. In the beginning, it looked strange and exciting for tourists. Then, as the dolls began to age and rot, this place became more attractive for people. There are several legends about the reasons for his obsession. Okay, Susie's had enough of these mysteries and creepy places. Now she wants to admire something majestic that was created by nature. She arrives in California's Sequoia National Park, where the most giant trees in the world grow. She's looking with an open mouth at the biggest tree in the world, a giant sequoia. Its name is General Sherman, and it's about 2,000 years old. The volume of this tree is almost half the size of an Olympic swimming pool. Despite its age, it's not the oldest one. There are redwoods in the park that appeared 3,000 years ago and the tallest tree in the world grows here, in California. It's a redwood that belongs to the sequoia family. It's called Hyperion. This is one-third of the Eiffel Tower's height. Just imagine what kind of view you can see from the tree's top. Now, Susie is on the island of Madagascar. She's going to see unique baobab trees. They look like something has ripped them out of the ground, turned them upside down, and shoved them back in. Baobabs are some of the most beautiful trees in the world. Most of them are here in the Alley of Baobabs. But you can also find them in Australia and South Africa. Their tree trunks resemble sponges. They expand and absorb moisture during the rainy season. Elephants like to drink it. They tear off and chew the trunk's parts to quench their thirst. 
At night, flowers bloom on the baobabs. They smell like sour milk and attract bats. But the most interesting thing is that the baobab doesn't dry out and doesn't fall like other trees after the end of its life. It crumbles, settles, and leaves a pile of pieces on the ground.